yeah, I hate that I'm here too. Bonjour, my drone believers and adventure seekers. Guess what time it is, folks? It's our favorite time of the day. It's time to come play. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <sighs> Over the past couple of months, I have gotten two comments in particular that a lot of people like to scream at me. The first one is not really relevant, but it's you know. The first one is everyone yelling at me to watch Julian the Phantoms. And all that tells me is that a lot of you do not follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Because if you did, you know that I made a point to say there that I'm not gonna make a video about it. Why? Simply because I don't have an interest to watch it. I watched the trailer when it came out and to me it comes off as teen boppity bop which at the time and still more so even I'm not in the mood to watch and yeah there's nothing deep about it I just don't feel like watching the show so I'm not gonna watch the show I'm not gonna talk about it you can leave me alone on that it's not happening the second comment that a lot of people love to yell in my face is to watch the miraculous ladybug New York special and to talk about it and again clearly you don't follow me on Instagram and Twitter because if you did you would know that I did but I can't post the video. Why? Because every time I try to upload it, I have tried flipping the camera, I've tried adjusting the audio, I've tried shaping it in a way where you can see me more and it'll be done. I have tried every way, shape, and form I can think of to edit this video in a way that I still enjoy and that people can watch and still understand what's going on, but every single time, Zag takes it down for copyright infringement, which is not true. Because under fair use, what I'm doing is technically legal. Anyways, I can't post the video. I have it, but I cannot post it because Thomas saw my other video <laughs> and he doesn't like what I have to say. But regardless, there's that. So if anything, what you can take away from this is to follow me on Instagram and Twitter because that's where it's easy for me to like post things and say, hey, this is what's up. This is what's poppin'. Today, I'm going to talk about Miraculous Ladybug because I have some things to say and I'm tired. I'm just tired in general. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary folk of all kinds, we have a sponsor. How many of you have a gaping hole in the right of your chest that is full of emptiness and loneliness and the only way that you can find that you can fill it is with materialistic things that you buy online. Just me? Okay. Well, anyways, if you are a fan of Miraculous Ladybug and you want some fun Miraculous Ladybug things, well, have I got a place for you. Culture Fly. They sent me their Miraculous Ladybug box. I know, it's got like the whole actual logo and everything. And they wanted me to show you what's in it and to tell you to get one of your own. They're still available. And this is their first ever Miraculous box they've ever done. It's really nice packaging that much, I will say. And they've got a bunch of cool things in here. When you open it up, it gives you a list of everything that's in it. And everything is like legitimate like this is legitimate merchandise and whatnot. According to the thing, it comes with a shirt, a bandana, a beanie, a jewelry box, some socks, stickers, a changing mung, a jigsaw puzzle of Adrian. I don't know, that's, okay. And then a snow globe as well, oh my gosh! So yeah, if you're interested in getting your own box, then you can use my affiliate code, which is in the comments below, in the description as well. It's gonna be there, you can look for it, you have eyes, you can search and whatnot. So thank you Culturefly for sending me a box and thank you guys for checking them out and supporting us, the channel and them. I am a terrible spokesperson. <laughs> Normally I would never wear this, but for the sake of this video, why the frick not? <laughs> Look at that, it's got little cat ears. If I'm tiling the video the way that I think that I am, I rewrote Miraculous Ladybug. It's not as detailed as my after video where I rewrote the after movie and made it better in my opinion. So this is kind of just like a general concept idea of how I want the plot to go down. Before I get into that, I will briefly talk about the New York special because I know a lot of people wanted to know my opinion about that. To keep it short, overall, it was a waste of time. There were a lot of issues I had with it. The biggest one was just how annoying that the whole plot just was centered around the Adrianette ship. Cause like, you know, we got our love square and all that jazz, but it mainly focused around Adrian and Marinette trying to get together. And like, ah, annoying. Also, I personally more focus on like the story and the plot and like how it goes and blah, 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 blah. That's like my top tier focus when I'm watching or reading any kind of like storytelling content, okay? So I was heavily confused and annoyed when they added in this whole new lore of multiple boxes. It was not necessary. It didn't add anything to the plot because by the end of the special, they get the Talon Miraculous and the one girl gets it and then she turns into Eagle, but she doesn't do anything. She doesn't, there's, oh my gosh. 
gosh. Anyways, it was an hour of my life I will never get back. Half the time I don't understand why people want to hear me talk about Miraculous Ladybug, but then I remember that I made a couple videos about Miraculous Ladybug, and my most recent Miraculous Ladybug video is me really going off about it. And in that video, it did ridiculously well, which I'm still surprised to this day. But in that video, there are like three different kinds of comments I get. The first kind is people agreeing with me that like, yes, the show, what is it? What is going on? What is happening? We're very confused. The second kind of comment is people getting mad at me because I'm taking it too seriously because it's a kid's show. First of all, just because it's a kid's show does not excuse it from constructive criticism, okay? Not to mention, if you want to use that argument of like, it's a kid's show, it doesn't need to be well written or good. Avatar The Last Airbender is right there. The bar is here meet it. And if anything, because it's a kid's show, I should be able to criticize it. I should criticize it even more because this is the content your kids are watching. Yes, it's not that deep, but this is what they're consuming. If some kid is watching Marinette obsess over Adrian in an unhealthy way, they're gonna think, ah, oh, yes, this is what true love is like, and this is how I should treat all of my future potential crushes and loves in the future, in this exact way, shape, and form. And no. No, not too much on top of that. I have been watching this show since it came out when I was younger. I don't freaking know when this show came out. I think this show came out in what, 2014, 15? I don't know. I haven't watched this since I was in high school when I was really big into kids cartoons. I'm not that much anymore. My interests have shifted a bit, but I've been following the show for a while. So I'm attached to these characters and to this plot because when it started out, it was intriguing and I wanted to know more and I wanted to see where this would go. But now I'm done. I'm dipping out. I'm tired. I'm sick of it. I, I can't deal with this anymore. This is probably will be my last video I make of Miraculous Ladybug unless circumstances change. The other comment people come at me is Chloe and Marinette are the most terrible characters to you? What about Lila? Lila is irrelevant to me. I could care less about Lila. The potential character arc development that she could have had was immediately desecrated the moment she came on screen because I don't have time to waste considering her, okay? There's no hope for her, I don't even, but there is hope for Marinette and Chloe, and that's why they're the most irritating case, in my opinion, all right? Now that we got that out of the way, I just told everyone to go buy this box, and I'm about to drag this show. Yes, I did that, and you would do it too for a check. I was an employee, and I was for sure gonna get employee of the month, and that's on period. This is how I would have wrote Miraculous Ladybug. Let's begin with the general information because I'm gonna get into explicit detail on like how I would do the love square, how I would do the lore, and how I would actually have the show progress. In general, I would have made this show 2D. And before you come at me, I know that originally this was supposed to be a 2D inspired anime show, but there was some issues with Ladybug spots and they couldn't get it all over the place. And then put less spots, my guy. Not say I could do it better, but I could do it better. Whenever I draw Ladybug, this is the character design for her suit that I use. Does it look exactly like her original suit? No, not at all but you still get the impression this is Ladybug. Less spots make it very much like a superhero. You know what I mean? So we're gonna keep it 2D because 2D would have made this show elite and I would give it a little bit more grace if it was 2D, but that's neither here nor there. It would go in chronological order. My biggest gripe I had with the show was when they first started it, the first season. The first season ends with the origin story and I always hate it when shows do that. Why would you put the origin story at the end? Put it at the beginning so we all know what's going on. I hate it, it's a personal thing. Maybe y'all are fine with it, but I personally cannot stand it. I don't know how old Marinette is. I'm assuming she's like a freshman in high school, so she's maybe, what, 13, 14? Me, what I would have done is I would have aged them up. I would have made this their senior year, so they're like 17, 16, 18, or whatever. I don't know how kids age, and I don't know how uh, schools work in Europe and Paris, but I'll use the terminology that I know. They would have been like, you know, seniors in high school. This is like their last year before they go into like university, college, and whatnot. Because then that leads into the point where like Adrian, who has been homeschooled his entire life because his father is, you know, a little bit overprotective and whatnot. A little is kind of an understatement, but to me it makes sense where like he's begging his father, he wants to go to a public school because it's his last year of high school and he wants to have some semblance of a real life school experience. You know what I mean? I feel like that kind of works. That works, we're gonna go with that. Also, I'm gonna change it in which Marinette and Alia are like lifelong childhood best friends, okay? Because in the origin episode, Alia is also new to school along with Adrian and to me that's like a lot going on. So I feel like maybe Adrian is just a new kid. What I want personally is I want Marinette to visually 
look mixed because her mother is Chinese and her father is French. However, when you look at Marinette, she looks white to me. Like, she looks white passing. And just for, like, diversity's sake, I would love it if, like, she does look mixed. Like, you look and you're like, oh, that's a mixed girl right there. She's mixed with white and Asian. Like, I would like her to, like, visually, like, let's, let's see the, let's see the visualization, my guy. I keep the origin episode pretty much the same, except I make it the stakes a little bit higher where, like, maybe when Adrian goes to stop Chloe, it's not her Chloe just putting gum in her seat. Like, that's really challenge. Let's do something like, I don't know, Chloe posting something that's like really bad online and then Marinette catches him and she assumes, oh my gosh, you're just like him. And then he's like, no, I'm not. So yeah, I want to keep it like that. I also want to say that because Chloe is obviously Marinette's bully for like years to come, Marinette can't stand Chloe. She can't stand anyone that's associated with Chloe because she just assumes based off all the years of bullying, she just assumes they're all the same. They're all like that. That's what I want because then obviously, you know, Marinette can learn, oh, Adrian's not like that. I guess he's actually really nice. And then she She's like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. And I'm like, I really like him. And I'm like falling for him and ah! But it's chill, you know? Also, I wanted to be where Adrian, because he was like kind of shut from the world, he's a little naive in a little sense. And I wanted to be where like, he's just so rich. He doesn't know how commoner things work. Like how Tamaki Senpai is with Haruhi. But like not that chaotic because it's Adrian and he's a little precious boy. For the origin story, I want them to like, you know, they get their miraculous. And I want to keep it the same because I actually really liked that. I really liked, what I really enjoyed about the show was was the difference in Ladybug and Marinette and Cat Noir and Adrian. I really liked how they really show the different sides to the, the person as a whole. Like Marinette always came across as clumsy and awkward and had like a little bit low self-esteem or whatever and really shy. But when she's Ladybug, she's clever, she's confident, she's brave, like she doesn't hesitate in her decision making. And then Adrian, who is this polite, soft, kind-hearted person, has to be careful what he says. I always imagine that because he like has so many strict rules placed about his house and he has to follow a strict routine and has to do all these things where he can't be himself. He feels like he doesn't have any sorts of freedom. What I loved is how as Cat Noir, he has that freedom. He can be the wild child that he's always wanted to try to be and he can be sarcastic and witty and vivacious, all that fun jazz. And I really liked how, in a sense, their miraculous form was like the person that they wanted to be and that kind of like adds to the fold of them as a whole person. I really like that and I want to keep that, you know, a core concept in it. And you can really get that feel from the first episode when Adrian gets the miraculous and he jumps in without any hesitation or any and he like hears any of the rules of what it is he just goes to be cat noir and he's loving it whereas marinette's like uh-uh no 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 but like when it comes down to it and she has to save alia she's like all right fine i gotta do this i gotta help people and she just she decides to take up the mantle i really like that and i want to keep that my one thing is i want i want it to be more focused on obviously marinette because she's like the main focal point but also with adrian because there's a lot of times in the show even though the show is called miraculous the tales of ladybug and cat noir it's mainly focused on ladybug and i would like to have a lot more of like Adrian and like getting to know him and his character because he's got a super extreme plot. What I would do is because I want to like keep the tension and the mystery of it all. I don't want any points of view from Hawk Moth. We don't see any of his, oh yes, fly my little Akuma. We don't see any of that. He's a mystery to us. We're trying to figure out who Hawk Moth is. Yes, by the end of, I don't know, season three or whatever, we find out that, oh, it's Gabriel. But like throughout the show, I want the viewer to try to figure out who it is and there's like different people, which we're going to get into. For the most part, this show is them focusing on saving the Akumas and dealing with their high school troubles and stuff like that and also with them trying to figure out who Hawk Moth is. That's the gist of it. My big issue with the original show is that I don't understand what their lore system is. I don't get what? I think I touched based on this in my first ever Miraculous video where I talk about theories and whatnot. I had assumed that there was some actual lore system. There's not. Is not, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I have thought that like the Kwame was kind of like a good versus bad system. There's light, there's dark, there's good, there's evil. Okay, I had assumed that the Kwame's, the miraculous, were the good. And in such, because there's got to be an opposing force, there's a dark sense. And that would be the final baddie in the end. But so far, there's not been an indication of that. So I'm gonna assume that they don't even know. But you know what, kids? In mine, there is. I came up with a whole freaking legend for this. It. This is called the Miraculous Legend. And it's told maybe in season two, like the Kwamis, like Tiki and Plague, they're both telling the story, both to Adrian and Marinette separately in their own selective houses. This is how the legend goes, okay? In the beginning, when the world was first created and man was still roaming the earth trying to figure out how to be, there was the god of 
Scenario, the god of pain and darkness, he plagued the world. He tried to make it his own. And then, like, from that, humanity was under his hold and suffering. So while the world was under his control, a ladybug, a legitimate ladybug, was tired of it and wanted the world to go back to the way it was and was tired of seeing her friends in pain and wanted to help people. So she went to her friend, the black cat, and together they went to stop and defeat Ophelia. So the ladybug was able to trick the god into giving up his power and the black cat was able to break his magic staff or whatever. I don't freaking know. And the two of them sealed him away from the world. So the ladybug and the black cat stopped the god of darkness with the god of god, the goddess Vasala. I'm just making these names up. I literally wrote this up instead of paying attention to the training video that they were playing at my new job. So yeah, a lot of this is not fleshed out in the slightest. The goddess Vasala, the god of good and light, rewarded the ladybug and the black cat with the miraculous. And they became the new creature. They became a Kwame. So now they were gifted with new powers and were blessed to live eternally. And they decided that they wanted to protect the world from Othario and all things bad. So the goddess told them that if they want to use miraculous, they have to have a champion of earth to freaking in order to use the miraculous. But the goddess, before she left, she said that they must never be used together by one person because if they do, they will receive a wish. However, the cost of it requires a sacrifice. I don't freaking know. The cost is too high. It's not worth it. it. It's really bad. Just don't. So that's the legend of the miraculous, okay? That's how it was formed. That's that's where it comes from. It's from that kind of thing, all right? We got some magical beings, magical deities roaming around. That, that's, that's the, that's, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I love the idea of the love square. I love the tension and the chaos and the frustration you get because two people are in love with each other, but they're not at the same time. They're in love with different versions. So Marinette, who is Ladybug, is in love with Adrian, who's Cat Noir. But Adrian, who's in Cat Noir, is in love with Ladybug, who in turn is Marinette. But they don't know that. They don't freaking know that. They just think, oh, I'm in love with this one person, when really you're in love with this person as well. Ah, because they're all the same person. I want to keep the love square because I love it. And obviously they're endgame. Friggin. However, this is how I'm gonna make it happen because I'm sick of Marinette's Yandere's tendencies. Gosh. Marinette likes Adrian. She doesn't love him. She don't know him like that enough to love him. Maybe she's infatuated with him, but she don't love him yet. She likes Adrian, but Adrian likes Ladybug. He doesn't love Ladybug. He likes Ladybug. He slowly will love Ladybug, but he doesn't love her yet. So what I want, I want them to be friends. Obviously, Marinette likes Adrian, Adrian likes Ladybug. So because they like other people, there's not like room for a freaking relationship. So I want Marinette to obviously like Adrian and like attempt to pursue him, but because she's shy and awkward and doesn't really got him because Adrian is a dumb, adorable idiot. He doesn't understand a concept of friendship and romantic relationships. He just thinks, oh no, Marinette's a really cool friend. She doesn't like me in that way, shape or form. You idiot. You're lucky you're pretty. So at one point, I do want Marinette to decide to stop pursuing Adrian because it's not going anywhere and instead to maybe try something with Luca because she kind of likes Luca and he's actually reciprocating her feelings and, you know, it's mutual. So I want that. I also want Adrian to finally, as Cat Noir, to like let go of Ladybug because he's made so many pursuits and she makes it clear that she's not interested in him. And so he's like, fine, I will stop. I'll just move on. And then he goes and he ends up dating Kagami because he likes Kagami. And what I want is I want Marinette to like Luca because she sees some things in Luca that she doesn't realize remind her of Adrian. And I want Adrian to date Kagami because he sees some things in Ladybug that he doesn't realize is Ladybug. And I know that's bad to say, but I want them to like think they're they're moving on when they're really they're not. They're still in love with the other person. And then they come to realize, oh, I'm still in love with this other person. It's not fair for me to date you. And then they all break up. I know it's bad and it's heartbreaking, but we need the angst. Or I do at least. I live off of it. After Marinette decides to get over Adrian and she's dating Luca. I want the two of them to actually become really good friends where they can have jokes and they can have an actual conversation. They get along well. I want that for them because that in my mind will strengthen their romantic relationship if they are friends. Because if they say they're friends but they don't actually act like friends, if they are actually friends and they fall in love, it'll be great. And then for the same I want said for Ladybug and Cat Noir. I want them to actually become a team and partners and when they actually schedule to go on patrol, they're like goofing off, they're making jokes, but they're also like having their witty banter as they're defeating villains and stuff like that. I want that for them because I think that'll strengthen their relationship in the end, okay?
For the actual show, I make it about four seasons, okay? And for season one, this would be maybe about like 10, 12 episodes, you know, it's nothing major. But essentially, this is like the soft era, you know? It's them discovering their powers, figuring out how to be Ladybug and Cat Noir, because it's a little bit awkward and clunky at first, but they're getting them, they're figuring that. So basically, them understand their powers, the Love Square drama, his family drama, or whatever the frick. It's, they got some high school issues they gotta think about, like with their friend was well. It's just like, it's mainly them in their high school lives just trying to figure out how to be Michael's label. The dark stuff is not here yet. But by the end of the first season, they realize that the Akuma tech are connected to the Aggress Foundation, all right? I want this to actually, like, give plot to Adrian's family. Like, Adrian, Adrian's family, the Aggress. In the show, it sounds as if Gabriel married into the Aggress family, and that was an issue for them. I don't know. They really didn't touch subject into that, but in my version, the Aggress family, maybe he didn't marry into it, but he's from this also really well-known family or whatever the fuck. They're a very wealthy family. Their view is socialites in society. So that being said, Adrian is verified on every social media platform, but not much is known about him because his family is very strict and he can't have that much access to the outside world than what they deem is appropriate to post online and whatnot. So Adrian would still be like the face of the Aggress brand because Gabriel doesn't like being on screen and whatnot, but like everyone knows Adrian because he's the handsome son of the Aggress family. And so like, because he's verified on everything and he has a huge following, obviously everyone loves him in a sense where like everyone loves their favorite K-pop star and whatnot and they would like they stand and all that stuff so that they need to take that in consideration too and I want Marinette to understand that like obviously he's famous everyone's gonna be in love with him I'm not special in that sense that was always freaking annoying but I want the aggressed family the foundation where they have their conglomerates of business and stuff like that and like Gabriel runs a very successful fashion line and whatnot to just you know them to have all this money they're rich folk all right ha <laughs> eat the rich Season two is it gonna be more of the confusing love square. And in this season, we introduce Luca, Kagami, and Lila. Now, Lila, I actually want her to have a plot. I want her to have a character arc. And when we meet her, she's chill. We actually like her as a viewer. She is nice to everyone. She's not a lying, conniving son of a bitch. She's actually a really great character. And like, she's not like a huge character. She's there whenever like Marinette needs help or whatever, but she gets along with everyone, okay? I do, however, want some points where Lila says some things that are just kind of strange or like you don't really think much about it or the characters don't think much about it but they just they're just kind of like okay that's an interesting view to have on some things like it's a little bit darker than what I would have said but okay you're still chill I really like you or whatever I want that and obviously Lila likes Adrian because freaking Adrian is golden boy we love him so like as they're being ladybug and cat noir they figure out that natalie is the one behind all the connections between hawk moth and the aggress foundation they realize that she's been the one who's been putting on the orders and doing all these things that tie into hawk moth and this is more near the end or whenever so in the season finale they confront her and they defeat her thinking she's hawk moth because remember in the actual show she has the peacock miraculous which amplifies the miraculous of others so because Natalie works for Hawk Moth what I'm gonna do is they're gonna fight Natalie they think she's Hawk Moth they defeat her and she's critically injured Marinette realizes that she's not Hawk Moth and I don't know if she just finds a feather and she realizes that like this is not a moth she can't be Hawk Moth and then she realizes like this is the this is a different miraculous this is a peacock miraculous we're looking for the, the butterfly miraculous so they put the pieces together but because she's so critically injured because the peacock miraculous is broken so it made her sick so by the time they defeat her she is just she's really bad she's really messed up so in order to save her life they put her into a medically induced coma in the hospital and she's under constant guard because she's under arrest under suspicion related to hawk moth and other police terms that we're not gonna get into today because i'm not a cop so they still don't know who Hawk Moth is, but they know that there's still some connection to the Aggress Foundation. So season three, which is going to be my favorite season, y'all. Hawk Moth needs a new disciple because Natalie's out of commission. So he tries to recruit Chloe because Chloe is a brat. We don't like Chloe. She's irritating. She's a bully. She has all the makings to be a bad guy. He goes to Chloe. He tries to make her a baddie and she considers it. And as much as she's tempted to take his offer, she refuses and she helps Ladybug stop Hawk Moth and blah blah blah. Because what I really liked about Chloe, as much as she gets on my nerves, is I liked how there was some explanation as to why she's the way she is because of her. Her parents neglected her and her mom is essentially verbally abusive to her. And it's not an excuse for the way Chloe is, but it 
gives explanation to it and it also leaves room for compassion from others to help Chloe realize that you don't need to be this way. There are other people who do love you and do care for you. I feel like that's the reason why Chloe was always so akin to Ladybug because Ladybug was good and kind and like maybe she saw her in a sense of like maybe she can accept me and love me because my parents don't. So I do want that and where Chloe decides to like be a better person from that point because the idea of Hawk Moth, the most evil villain in the world right now, wants her to join her because this man thinks oh you're just as bad as me join me this is obviously going to be an awakening point for her like am i really that bad i don't want to be like my parents i don't want to be like the people who hate me i want that to be her awakening and from that point on she makes an effort to be a nicer kinder better person and throughout the rest of the show we see that so that happens ladybug saves chloe stops the akumatized whatever the frick however i want to as hawk moth is like i don't know dipping out or whatever he says never mind i found someone better someone else just came into the light or there's a new player in the group oh i wonder what that was about season three is when marinette decides to get over adrian because she realizes he doesn't like me he won't see me in that sense i'm just gonna try to move on without letting him know like because he doesn't know he's not aware that she actually has feelings for him so she moves on she starts dating luca because luca came in season two and they were bonding and now maybe he confessed to her and so she's like oh i like you too luca but like not as much as he likes her or whatever the freak so they're dating and adrian wants to get over ladybug so he dates agami but i want i want cat noir to get over ladybug back in season two so that way there's like they're you know it's not all happening at the same time because they gave up on each other this will be the point where marinette and adrian start to become really good friends and they can have a conversation and they can talk and joke and be friends and heck even in this season they try to get nino and alia together because i was so annoyed when all of a sudden they just said yeah alia and nino are dating now it's like that came out of left field, but all right. Like, you couldn't have, like, worked up to that. You couldn't have, like, had a whole little thing because there was a whole thing back in the first season when Nino was in love with Marinette, and we're just gonna now, like, he's like, oh, I can't have Marinette. Guess I'll go for the bestie. Like, uh-uh. Hello? No. Then a few episodes before the season finale, each couple breaks up because there was, like, this Akuma attack that reveals their true feelings, and this is when Marinette realizes she's still in love with Adrian, and this is when Adrian realizes he's still in love with Ladybug, and it's not fair to Luca and Kagami. And I think Luca probably figured out, like, you were never really into it as much, and I see the way that you look at him. It's not as much as how you look at me, and I will always love you, Marinette, but this isn't fair for the both of us, and they all split up respectively, and Kagami... I feel like Kagami would get a little bit mad because she does have that spitfire in her, but, like, she respects Adrian's decision because she knows he's not a bad guy. And so they break up. Maybe there's, like, a school dance or whatever because this is where we're getting to, like, near the end of the school year or whatnot. And they're sitting, they're talking, they're talking about their breakups and whatnot. And Adrian's, like, a little confused. He's like, man, you guys were really good together. I don't get why. And then Marinette, I want this to be where Marinette confesses. She's like, because I liked you, Adrian. I liked you a lot from the beginning. And I think I could see myself falling in love with you. And Adrian's like, huh? because he doesn't know what to do the second to last episode also i forgot to say this but in this season we're gonna have to create our own new character because there's gonna be i don't know how economies and companies work but for the aggressed foundation gabriel is like the head head honcho but there's got to be someone underneath him that's like still kind of in charge and watches over a lot of the businesses that gabriel doesn't you know and i want ladybug and cat Noir to think okay this guy is above natalie so he must be Hawk Moth because Natalie was doing all this stuff reporting to him. When really, it wasn't him. It was Gabriel. <gasps> Hi, yes, I figured it out. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the guy who's below Gabriel but above Natalie, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make him Felix. You know, that one dude who originally was supposed to be Adrian, but then they didn't make him Adrian. Instead, they made him his cousin. Yeah, we're gonna take him, we're gonna age him up, and we're gonna make him the guy that they think is Hawk Moth and that Natalie was reporting to. Da, 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 da. Because, like, it'll make sense to Ladybug and Cat Noir because of Felix's personality and how he gives off that doom and gloom kind of vibe. And so you think, oh yeah, that man is definitely Hawk Moth. I don't know. I think that works. So we're gonna roll with that. So basically, the second to last episode, this is where all of it's going down. Oh my gosh, y'all are ready for this. The second to last episode, Ladybug and Cat Noir decide, okay, it must be him. This, this doesn't make any sense at all. We gotta stop him as soon as they can. So they go. They confront him, they capture him, and this guy's like freaking out. I was like, I'm fucking annoyed, please let me out. And they're just like, You're Hawk Moth. He's like, No, I'm not Hawk Moth. What, what do you mean? I've never met the man before in my life. And he's telling the truth, they can just tell that he is. And they're just like, But you've been doing all this stuff. He's like, That's just part of what I have to do. I Gabriel told me I needed to do this stuff. And then they're like, Wait, Gabriel? Gabriel aggress? And this 
where Cat Noir is like flipping out like he's internally so conflicted. It's bad enough my name is attached to this, but now it's my own family? My actual father? What? So they realize it has to be Gabriel and then it all starts making sense, kinda, not really. But Ebook doesn't understand why Cat Noir is like trying to say it can't be him. She's like, what do you mean it can't be him? Like, why would it not? Everyone, all it leads up to him. He's the big man in charge. And she doesn't get why because she doesn't know that he's Adrian. So she's like, we'll meet at the Egret's house so we gotta stop Gabriel as soon as we can. Let's go, we gotta go, Cat. But before they can go, Ladybug gets a text that's meant for Marinette from Lila and it's urgent. And because Marinette cares about her friends and she cares about Lila, she's like, she would not text me if it was not this urgent. Like, it seems important. So Ladybug says, all right, I will be right back. I gotta go take care of something. I will meet you there. Cat Noir is like conflicted. He's like, all right, fine. So then Ladybug goes, changes into Marinette and it's just like, Lila, did you need me? But like, she can't find Lila. And then that's when Marinette is knocked out by Lila. And then we get to see like, we're from like Marinette's point of view and like, she's like dipping out, like dazing out, like, oh, Lila, Lila. And that's the end of the episode. So then the season finale will open like this. Marinette is lying on the ground, knocked out as Marinette. And Lila, talking about the Kumatizer, so she has the mirage power. She's creating this mirage because the Hawk Mob needs the miraculous. But the kick of it is, you can't take the miraculous. They have to be given of their own free will. So Lila, Lila at some point had figured out that Marinette was Ladybug. And she ends up tricking Marinette into giving up her miraculous because Marinette sees Adrian about to be killed. I know, it got really dark really fast. But because Marinette is in love with him and that's her friend, she's like, no, I have to save him. And the only way to save him is to give up miraculous. So she gives up her miraculous. And then on the flip side of that, Cat Noir is captured and he is being shown an illusion of Ladybug knocked out unconscious and is about to be killed as well. And so he panics and he gives up his miraculous. And so then that's when we find out that like, oh, he's Adrian. And so then Lila lifts up the mirage and the two of them see each other and they realize, wait, you're... What? Yeah, I know. Lila goes and she gives up the miraculous and like, Marin is like, Lila, why? I thought we were friends. And then Lila is just like... <laughs> please. Because Lila's unbalanced, okay? Maybe she's a borderline sociopath, but she has a reason for the way that she is, and like, the, the reason why she's so akin to Hawk Moth, and why she wants to be a part of the Hawk Moth, and why she liked Adrian, is because she... She has daddy issues. There's something in her past that makes her in a way in which she feels this need to be accepted and validated by a male authority, if you will. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't really thought this out. Lila gives Hawk Moth the miraculous, and that's when it's revealed that it is in fact Gabriel Agreste. And at this point, that Lila is like, yep, that's Lady Von Cat Noir if you're curious. And then that's when he realizes that's my son. And he's like, Adrian? And it's like this, ah! they, like they're so confused, but they feel betrayed, and they just like there's so much, there's so much. There's so much. Gabriel is like conflicted because it's like that's my son but like he still needs to do what he's been working to do this entire time so he's like I'm sorry and then he uses the miraculous for the wish and then there's like ah there's like a lot of energy and stuff like that and he makes his wish to bring back his dead wife because she died and like that's explained maybe Adrian tells Marinette that like yeah my mother passed away like a couple years ago it was really hard for the family my dad took it the worst back in like maybe season two maybe Hawkmoth he uses the wish on the miraculous and the same Sacrifice, I don't know, I freaking, I haven't decided what the frick it is. He uses a wish and he brings back his dead wife. What? The kicker is though, the wish was done by Othario. Othario tricks Hawk Moth and even though he brings back his dead wife, she's possessed by the god of darkness, Othario. And that's our baddie for season four. That's how season three ends with her waking up with the god inside of her. As that's going on, there's a lot of stuff happening right now, right? There's a lot of lights, there's a lot of action, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's in pain and whatnot. As this is happening, Marinette is able to grab the dead Miraculous because they've lost their power. And then Adrian is able to grab Plague and Tiki because because the Miraculous has been drained, Plague and Tiki, they are back in their actual form. So Plague is an actual black cat and Tiki is an actual little ladybug because they were said creature in the legend that was mentioned beforehand. You see? My brain. The power I have. Season four? Um, I didn't finish writing it, so we're just gonna make this up on the fly. Season four, it opens up with Marinette and Adrian, I don't know, are on the subway, and they're just like apart from each other. It's an empty car, one sitting on one end, one sitting on the other, and they're just dejected. They're just, there's so much they're processing right now. Adrian especially, he just got revealed that his father's been trying to kill him for the longest time, and that his dead mother is now back. There's a lot happening, and because there's a lot going on, they decide that they're not gonna talk about their conflicting romantic feelings right now, because 
now that they know who each other is, it's a lot to process, but they already have a lot to process on top of that. So they decided we're gonna put this on the back burner and we're gonna focus on stopping whatever the heck just happened. They decided that it can be good that this God of Darkness is back and they don't have the miraculous. They need to find a way to fix it. So they go to the Guardian. Oh, well, I know in the show, he's not the Guardian anymore. And I, I don't know if I wanna bring them in or if I wanna bring in the new Guardian because I didn't like the fact that they made Marinette the Guardian as well. Like she's already the hero of Paris. Why the frick do we gotta give her a new job? responsibility. She's a child. She's got so much to deal with already, all right? Let her deal with what she has right now and maybe later, but for the time being, they go to the Guardian. They ask him, hey, how do we fix this? The Guardian's like, oh, well, from what I know, the only way is if the goddess herself survives it, but she's been dead for millennia, so good luck with that, Charlie. So then instead, while they're trying to figure out how to bring back their Miraculous, because their Miraculous is the only ones who can actually defeat, like, Akumas, they still need Heroes of Paris, so Marinette decides, okay, so we're gonna have the few people that I've trusted in the past to help me save Paris. They're gonna be the ones to save Paris. I'm giving them their own miraculous. And instead of having Marinette and Adrian's entire class have a miraculous, because frankly, that is too much to keep track of, I am just giving Alia, Nino, and Chloe their appropriate miraculous. They go off and they save the world, and because they can't destroy Akumas, they just collect them, and so then when Ladybug is back, they, she can just do that herself. While they're doing that, Marinette and Adrian are trying to figure this out. And I also want to point out that because Adrian has all this issue with his family, he's decided to stay at Nino's for the time being and Nino's not questioning it. He knows that Adrian's family has always been a little weird and he's always assumed that there was just some drama so he's not pressing any questions but he's like yeah man you can just stay with me as long as you need to. And at some point I want Adrian to have a nightmare and the only person who can understand what's going on is obviously Marinette so he calls Marinette in the middle of the night and they have like a phone conversation where he's like I'm sorry did I wake you? And she's like no 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 you're fine what's up what's going on what can I help you with? And they talk and this is when they talk about their feelings and Marinette's just like we gotta we can't we have to we should wait to talk about it. He's like no there's no other time to talk about this now. This is when they realize that like it's so crazy that we've been in love with each other but the other person and then Adrian makes a point to say like so if we've loved the other person could we actually like each other and then Marinette's just like well why don't we just see now that we know who we are let's just go back to the way we were in which we were friends and if we end up liking each other then maybe we can do this. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but like something along the lines of like, well, let's, let's try it slowly. Let's take this carefully. Maybe not jump into a relationship right now because we have a lot to deal with, but let's still give it a chance. The idea of us, you know, there's that. And like I said, I haven't finished fleshing this out. I'm running out of filming time. So if anything, they figure out a way to like find the goddess and then she does revive it back. Or maybe because there was all those other miraculouses that are in the box, maybe those Kwame, because maybe at some point Tiki and Plague, because they were the first Kwamis, maybe at some point they met other friends along the way and they gave them a little bit of their power so they could become their own miraculous so they could have more people to help and stuff like that. So maybe at some point the Kwamis all get together and decide to give a little bit of their power they've grown over the years back to the original miraculous and that's how Tiki and Plague are able to come back. They're still very weak, but they still exist. And that's how Ladybug and Cat Nora can come back and stuff like that. And also at some point, because Othario is now possessing Amelia, the mom or whatever, he knows that Gabriel saw who who Ladybug and Cat Noir are and ask, by the way, who are they so I can grab their miraculous and summon Vasala and consume the goddess of light and I can be the ultimate being because he's still very weak as well. Gabriel makes a decision to not expose his son because he realizes that like, this is not my wife. I've made a horrible decision and I need to stop this. So he's like, I don't know. They were just some random kids and I frankly do not remember what they look like, even though he knows who they are. So we're gonna give him someone of a redemption arc. All right, folks, the season finale is exquisite. It's ultimate Ladybug and Cat Noir and their friend Queen Bee, Rena Rouge, and Carapace, and they're all fighting together to defeat Othario, and they do, and at the end, they want to give up the Miraculous because they've defeated, they've actually defeated the god Othario, he's never gonna come back, and Hawk Moth has given up his Butterfly Miraculous, so there's not gonna be any more akumatized victims, so Ladybug and Cat Noir want to give up the Miraculous, but then Flag and Tigger are like, no, we love you, we want to stay with you until we're, you're gone, because the only way to give up your Miraculous is either of your own free will, or if you die. So so it's graduation, they finish school, and Adrian is talking with his father, and they realize that like they need to work out their family issues. And Adrian tells Gabriel in a way that, like, listen, I need to keep my distance from you. I need some boundaries because there's a lot I need to process, but maybe sometime in the future we can have that family relationship if we both work at it. And Gabriel's like, I would like nothing more than that. Because you know, the mom is now officially dead, and like he's moved past us because he realizes that he has his family right here. It was in front of him the entire time. 
his wife essence of his wife and her character is in Adrian it was there from the very beginning he was just so consumed by his grief and anger that he wasn't able to see that so now he sees that and now they're gonna be able to hopefully sometime in the future to have that familial bond that they want and then this is when they talk about their feelings this is where Marinette and Adrian kiss in front of everyone and everyone's like war yes and Alia's like oh my gosh finally so they're dating they're together it's great and then you know it ends with Ladybug and Cat Noir just going around Paris stopping crime and whatever and being the heroes that they were always meant to be and it's a good happy ending but 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 I'm not done folks my favorite thing is when shows leave leadway leave a little room for potential future stories let the viewer just think a little Lila you remember her she steals the butterfly miraculous. She switches it with her own little created version. She grabs it for her own. She decides, you know what? Maybe it's my time to shine as the villain for future stories to come when they're older and whatnot. I don't freaking know, I'm just saying! Ladybug. Oh my gosh, that was exhausting. Like I said, I literally made this up on the fly, so there's definitely some things that I thought about that I forgot to say. That's it. That's that's how I would do it. That's if I was in charge, that's how I would have written this show. That's how I would have done it. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a little bit more easy to digest than the actual show we've got now. I'll leave it at that. I want to say again to Culture Fly for sponsoring this video, sending me their fun little box. It was great. This is actually a really nice warm hat. The cat ears are really cute too. Um, like I said, I hope you like this video. Anyways, I'm gonna go now because I have been talking for Ever. So I'm off. I've got places to go, people to be, worlds to conquer. Until next time, for everyone always, Nadia. Okay, bye!